All right, so we're all well aware of how important it is to be prepared when we go out into the woods. Even if it's just a day hike and we don't think we're going all that far, things can happen. You can fall and injure yourself. You can get storm stayed. Any number of things can happen. Being prepared is all so important. And one of the elements that we know we should have with us is some type of shelter, some type of cover that we can put up in a hurry. The only problem is, is most of the tarps, at least the tarps I have, that are worth carrying are also kind of bulky. Maybe not heavy, but just bulky. And as a result, they compete for other things in my backpack. Well, what if you could carry a shelter that was basically you could hold in your hand? Would you be more likely to take it? That's what this is. This is the One Wind Camping Shelter. Nice little lightweight compact shelter that you can set up in minutes. If you're interested in hearing more about it, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank One Wind for sending me the camping shelter so that I could share it with you. So what I thought I would do to minimize the talking and get to setting this shelter up for you is to gift give you the bare minimum of information here, and then I'll put all the rest of it, the, the rest of the specifications and everything in the video description, as well as the links, of course, to where you can take a, another look at it. Okay, so basically what this is, is a trapezoidal shape tarp. It allows you to set this up in a couple of different configurations. It is made from ultralight sill nylon, and the tarp itself, or the shelter, either way you want to refer to it, comes in at 9.3 ounces. So very light, very small as you can see. Goes into the bottom of even a day bag, or you know, a shoulder bag, even if you wanted to make sure you had some type of a shelter with you. However, there is another bag that came with this, and you might consider these options or accessories, but they're pretty much ob obligatory to have if you want to set this up. So you do get another small bag, and inside of that small bag, love these, you get seven of these lightweight aluminum Shepherd's Crook tent pegs. They're quite long. I think they're seven inches in length and uh, these work really well. I actually love using these much more so than the uh, common triangular ones, uh, you know, the three-sided ones that you can get. These are really nice to work with. They hold on to the, they're easy to push in and, they're, and they hold on to the guy lines well. You also get six of these, six of these 10-foot type 2 paracord uh, reflective orange guy lines so that you can use these for setting up your tarp. Now, I'm going to show you in my demonstration, I'm going to be using a ridge line, but uh, I just, it's just because I'm used to using a ridge line. I think it provides me some options, but you don't have to use a ridge line. You can attach these to your shelter and use these instead of a ridge line. And there are a few other options that I'll share with you as we go along. Now, I understand when you purchase these now, you do also get one more accessory that did not come with mine. And it is a two-piece magnetic tie-out. Really kind of cool. You can find a spot somewhere in the center of your shelter and you uh, place the magnet on either side of the sill nylon and it gives you a pullout that gives you more room inside. Mine didn't come with one. I'm actually thinking I'm going to purchase one uh, on my own to go with this because, uh, well, uh, one, I wanted to test it out to see how well it works, but two, I think it will give you just some options and setups that you can get a bit more room inside of your shelter. Okay, that's the basic components of this. What I want to do now is set this up in its most standard format, and then we'll talk about the variations from there. All right, so I went ahead and set up a guy line between a couple of trees here, and I have some Prusik loops attached to the guy line from here and there, and I'll, I'll give you some close-ups in a few minutes. Don't worry if you can't see everything right now. Um, I have it set up at about mid-chest level. Up to you how high you want to set it up, and I'll, I'll talk about the variations as we go. Uh, at chest level, with the Prusik loops, uh, it does come down a little bit, but I, what I want it is so that if I'm sitting under it, at the edge of it, at the drip line, that it would be at my head level or just above, so I wouldn't have to crouch down inside of it. Okay, so let's get started. Pull the shelter out. Put the stuff sack away in my pocket so I don't lose it. Now, there is a long side and a short side to this, and I'll give you the specs for that in a few moments time. Uh, once we get it up, and I'll bring you in and give you a little closer look. It can be an issue when you first get this, trying to figure out which is the long side and which is the short side until you get a little bit used to it. So I went one step further and I added small, little tiny 
type two paracord loops at each of the tie-out points for two reasons. One, I color-coded them so that I knew which would be the ones that run along my ridge line and which would be the ones that go to the ground. The other reason, as you'll see, the tie-outs are they're folded over nylon webbing. They work, there's no, and they're strong. It's just that they're a little hard to get the stakes into or get a Prusik uh, hooked into. So that's the reason I did that. Absolutely not necessary, but I think it does make it a little bit easier to use. All right, so let me hook this up. So this is going to be the standard shelter, when I mean standard setup. And again, we'll talk about the variations you can do. Now, when it comes to hooking these onto Prusiks, a lot of people like to go old school way, run the loop through the tie-out point, put a little stick in like a toggle. That's great, it works, okay? If you run around, and there's lots of sticks on the ground here, I could've used for that. I was a little lazy. I just got a little, couple of little night eyes carabiners, the S-hooked carabiners, and they hook on, it makes this much, much faster. All right, that's one on. Uh, my other one, one, two, this one, all right. Hooked on, stretch it out. Trying to make sure I stay in frame for you. Now, I did mention this is trapezoidal. So on each of the corners that go to the ground are little pockets, really kind of cool. Again, I'll give you some close-ups. And what I do with that is I actually stake that straight down from here, straight down, and you can make your adjustments after the fact, of course. That side. And the other side, again, straight down from where the Prusik is. And you can see I have my back to the wind because the tarp is floating towards you. Did that so you could actually hear me over the wind. Take the corner. Grab the other corner. Now. All right, yeah, okay, lots of room for adjustment here, as you can see. I had to basically shut up or set up, so now I'm just adjusting to get it a little tauter. All right, that's looking pretty good, and I'll put one stake in the center in the back to pull it out. I can take that corner and give it another pull it to the side. Oh, much nicer, much nicer. Okay, basic shelter all set up. I'll take the camera off the tripod. We'll take a little look around and I'll give you some specifications for it as we do. All right, let's take a closer look at the tarp shelter. So once again, this is the standard or basic shelter setup. There are some variations, but again, we'll talk about in a moment. But I think this is the one most people will probably use most of the time, unless they have a need to move to one of the other shelters. It's the one I've been using most of the time it, because it just works. It's plenty big. I'll have to put the camera back on the tripod and lay down inside. So you can see just how much room I have in here. But let's start with some basics. So the long side of this, the trapezoid, is what's attached to the guy line. So what we have is along the long side from the pocket in that corner, up, across, and down, there are 10 tie-out points. I'm using the center, three tie-out points up at the guy line. So you can see where the tie-out point is. Nice reinforced nylon. I'll give you a better look of that on the other side. So you can see how well reinforced it is there. And you can see the small little loop of paracord that I put on it just to make it easy on myself trying to get the Prusiks attached to it. Or if I'm using the tent stakes, I'm not using the center one right now. Could just to give it a little bit more tautness, but not necessary right now. The other one. Now from this corner down, there's one in the center not being used and the one at the corner where that pocket is. You can see the pocket on the inside just to keep it from getting filled up with water or whatever if it were to rain. Okay, so that's the long side, 10 tie-outs. The 
part that's attached to the ground in the back there is the short side. And the short side only has three tie-outs and I have stakes in all three tie-outs. So this is a 15D sill nylon tarp. So very lightweight, but very, ripstop nylon at that, of course. Very lightweight, but very strong. And as I said, all the tie-outs are reinforced. So this again is the basic setup. And once, I don't know if I can show you this. You can probably see the little loop there. It's got like a multicolor piece of paracord. And at the base, just for making it easy on myself, down where the stakes are, I put black paracord just to differentiate from the main top one there. All right, so here we are looking at it from behind. Uh, okay, I am going to put the camera back on the tripod and get inside the shelter so you can see just how big this is. All right, so I am five foot ten and uh, I have plenty Plenty of room to lay down. Now I'm going to snug into the back a little bit because of course the corners do narrow at the back and show you. So I'm just up against the nylon now. If I had that tie out, that magnetic one, I could give myself a bit more room in here. But if you can see, laying down, I probably have 12 to 14 inches at my feet and about 18 inches at my head. If I move out towards the outside a little bit, even more space. So there's all kinds of space under this shelter in this standard tie-out. And again, this is the reason why I set it up at that height on the, on the guy line, is so that I could sit up in here. Now, it has pulled down some because of the tension I put on it, but when I started the guy line on, it was about at uh, mid-chest. Now it's probably at about waist height where you're, you're uh, at the right height, I guess, to get the, get the uh, clearance over your head. Okay, so this is the basic shelter setup. And uh, all I'd need now to spend the night here is a ground sheet, some type of a blanket or, or a sleeping bag to stay warm. And well, it's not bug season yet, but if it was bug season, that'd be a little different. We'll talk about that in a minute. In good weather, will this setup work for bad weather? Like, well, wind, of course, yes. Uh, what about rain? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but first let's just talk about a few options for setting this up. All right, so all I did this time was to lower the guy line. It started off at about belt level right here, and of course when I put the tension on it downwards, it lowered it down. But this is referred to as the stealth shelter variation. So there's not a lot of height in here, but man, there's a lot of coverage. Can you see? Look at this. I must have four feet at my head and foot before I reach the edge of the tarp. So much more coverage, not a lot of headroom, actually very little headroom. So what's the benefit of this? Well, this would be a great stealth shelter if you're looking to go low profile, don't want to be seen, this will definitely work. But I'm thinking also that this would be much more wind resistant because of its low profile to the wind and it allows you to get further in under the drip edge so that as long if it's raining as long as the rain's coming from the rear it won't help a whole lot if it's coming directly into your tarp but that's all about positioning it and knowing where the rain's going to come from in the wind but it'll give me more protection as well in uh, in the inclement weather all right let's just talk about a few variations this has been just been a variation of the standard but there's a couple other variations you can do with the same configuration. All right, let's approach in on the stealth shelter and I can show you what I did to modify it. So all I had to do was remove the Prusik line and carabiner from that loop over to this loop. That means there is no loops in between the corner and where I've tied it out. So effectively, the drip line is that much longer on either side now. But of course, that brings you down closer to the ground. So what other variations could I do with this? Let's just walk around back so I give you an idea of what it looks like. And yes, I could have done a little bit of better of a job of tightening and straightening it out so I didn't have that fold, but uh, that's just playing with it after the fact. So what else could I have done? Well, how about if I had actually raised the guy line where it's at right now, all the way up here, well above, say right up to my chin level, and then ran it out. Well, I wouldn't be able to get the corners all the way down to the ground, but I'd be able to fly it. Flying it mean that I could use the same configuration, but with guy lines attached to the corners 
and then run out to the stakes on all four sides. What that would give me is ventilation underneath. So there would be an opening all the way around under the tarp. So if it's a really hot summer evening and you don't need a lot of protection, you just want a little bit of shelter from the wind or from the rain more than anything else, then flying this, as it's referred to, will give you that and a lot more clearance underneath as well. All right, a couple of other options. As I mentioned from the beginning, I've used this guy line running right across the top. It's what I'm used to. It's easy for me to do, but you may not always have, you don't have to use a guy line at all. Remember those orange uh, guy lines, the 10 foot guy lines that came with this? All you really need to do is to tie them on wherever it is that you want to attach it to and then run them out to the trees. Now, when it comes to changing your setup, there it takes a little longer because you're gonna to have to untie it to go from one loop to the other loop. But essentially, it's doing exactly the same thing as this guy line does. And the benefit, of course, with the orange is you're less likely to walk into it and, and, and strangle yourself as you, as you go past it. So there is some benefit there. But if you're looking for low profile, not having the orange is certainly a benefit in this case. Okay, so that's another way of doing it. Now, what if you don't have trees? You have nowhere to tie it to. Well, you could also use your trekking poles. If you're a trekking pole person, you could use trekking poles at the two corners to do exactly the same thing. Set them up to the appropriate height and tie them out. Uh, or if you have a couple of sticks, uh, that of the appropriate height or you can cut to the appropriate height you could do exactly the same thing as you would with in tracking poles a couple of nice options here now i'm going to show you another variation i'll set it back up in standard mode i'll show you another variation and i'm going to include another product from one wind that i brought with me to do this all right as you can see i returned this back to the standard shelter setup lots of room inside of here and as long as the wind remains at my back i'm well protected and any rain that's coming from the back will fall at the drip edge. And as long as I'm back from that, I'm going to be okay. Problem is we can't always count on the wind to do what it is we want it to do. It's going to do what it wants to do. And if it shifts around in the middle of the night and you're, uh, now the wind is coming in the front, you're going to get wet. It'd be nice to have something that you could include with your system to give you protection from the front as well as the back. And that's when this, where this small product comes in. So this is a small rectangular tarp, also from One Wind. Now, I purchased this myself prior to One Wind sending me the shelter. In fact, it's the reason I reached out to One Wind and asked them to send me the shelter is because I bought this so I could have something small in my, ba my backpack that I can take out and use for an emergency shelter, and it's great. But when I became aware of this trapezoidal shelter, I realized that even provided me more options. Put the two of them together, and you're completely covered, literally. So what I'll do is I'll set this tarp up over top of the first one to show you how it can be used to give you f more protection in inclement weather. And you can also set it up in porch mode as well. All right, to create this shelter, I took my small tarp, footprint slash tarp, and stretched it out lengthwise over the ridge line. You can see it's staked down here at the corners, but before I staked it down at the corners, I also, let me move around this tree here, I had pre-attached some guy lines to all the corners on this tarp to make it quick setup in any eventuality. And I brought them out, gave them their own stake off at an angle, tied a taut line hitch to it so I could tighten it up. Same thing over on this corner. So basically, I've got something like a one-third, two-third over top of the guy line. So one-third stretching back over the drip line of the shelter and the rest of it going down to the ground down here. So yes, it is still open there. So unless the wind is coming from this angle, and even if it does, it's going to be somewhat protected, I've got shel uh, protection from most of the way around this shelter. And you know, it is sill nylon. It is waterproof. You do want some openings on it so that you can get some fresh air inside. Otherwise, you're going to wake up soaking wet from the condensation. But this gives me enough ventilation. And if I've judged the wind right, then I should be well protected from the rain. Now, I am going to set up one more time in another mode, but it's just a variation of this one. So let's set it up in porch mode. All right, so porch mode is nothing more than taking the corner of the rectangular tarp that was 
pitched down to the ground or staked into the ground and lifting the corner up. And I could have done this with both ends. I just took one of my trekking poles and lifted it up just to give an example, I guess, of a variation of porch so that I have just one end of this open. But look at the shelter inside there. Look how much room exists inside of this shelter. Totally protected from the wind, at least on most of the four sides and totally protected from the rain as well. And if the weather turns really bad, I just take this corner down to the ground, stake it in, and I'm well enclosed. All right, so that's a variation on shelters and ways that it can be set up. Just a few more comments before we close the video out. All right, I almost forgot there was one more shelter, one more variation I wanted to show you. Something completely different. I don't know how often I'll use this, but it does have some uses for sure. And that is I've completely flipped the shelter over. So instead of having the long side at the top, like I had before, I now I have the short side at the top. So just the three tie outs. And what I've done is I have attached the corner tie out and the center tie out here to the ridge line. But then the third tie out, I ran another ridge line off of the first over to a tree in that direction. And then the long side gets pegged out behind me. So what is this? Well, basically it's a wind wall or a privacy wall. One wind refers to it in both ways. I can certainly see it being useful right now as a wind wall. The wind is directly from behind me coming out of the south. You would probably not be able to hear me uh, if I was facing into the wind or didn't have this shelter behind me. So. Yeah, this is really nice. There is absolutely no wind reaching me where I'm sitting right now. And I could do whatever I want in front of this without being affected by the wind. Now it's not a rain shelter. It is just a wind wall or a privacy wall. If you're somewhere, I guess, in a campground, then you wanted a little extra privacy around your campsite, you could rig this up. Now, one wind shows using this with a telescopic pole, a pole of some type to raise it up in the center there. Uh, yeah, but, and it would be a lot easier than what I've done, which is to set it up on two ridge lines, one running off at the other one at a 90 degree angle. And I haven't got it set up per uh, perfectly either. As you can see, it's a little saggy on that side. That's because I couldn't get a good 90 degree angle. There was no tree over in that direction that I could angle it at. So I'm a bit at an open, wider angle here, but still doing the function. Just a different way of setting it up with another option. All right, now we can wrap this video up. All right, when we opened this video up, I said that this was a lightweight emergency shelter, something that you could shove into the corner of your backpack, not even notice most of the time because it's so small, so lightweight, there when you need it. Otherwise, it's not taking up any space or taking any space up from anything else that you wanted to pack in your backpack. But why couldn't you use this as your primary shelter to go camping with? Why not? There's no reason why not. It makes a really nice ultralight camping shelter for those who like to go minimalist. I would prefer something more than this most of the time, but I can see where people would like to use this as their primary shelter. Now, having said that, there are a few things you have to take into consideration. One, it has no floor. We already talked about that. You'd still need a ground sheet, something to put your air mattress on or your sleeping bag or quilt or blanket or whatever it is you're going to be sleeping with. Absolutely. You need something like that. That little t rectangular tarp would do well for that. Or if you want a piece of Tyvek or whatever it is you're going to use for a ground sheet, all good. You'd have to pack that as well. One more thing you would need May, well, not long, maybe some of you are already experiencing this, bug season. Um, I'm still just ahead of the bugs. The bugs haven't come out here, the biting bugs anyway, haven't come out here in Nova Scotia yet, at least in my area. So um, it's not a problem for me. In a couple weeks time, for me to try and stay in this overnight, I think it would be challenging to say the least. There is some good news though. One Wind does also make a bug shelter, basically a mesh nylon shelter that is in intended and designed to set up under this shelter and fits, it's actually appropriately shaped to you make maximum use of the space. I don't have that. I may ask One Wind if they will send it to me because I think the combination of the two makes a great minimal shelter. You have the option of using just the tarp shelter itself when bugs aren't an issue, and you have the option of the bug shelter when you want to use that, but you're not obligated to use the tarp. So if it's a really nice night, you just need the bug protection and you want the open air feeling, you just set up the bug shelter. Sounds like the versatility is really something and modular where you can add all these components together. Okay, there's one more thing I thought about for use with this shelter. I haven't done this yet. I'm not sure that I will. I may try next winter. And that is, wonder if I could set it up as a super shelter. 
maybe take one of those reflective blankets, tie it up in the corners on the inside, throw a piece of clear plastic over the outside of it, and have my fire outside of that. It would capture all the radiant heat inside, reflect it back on, on me from the reflective blanket that's inside. I think this would make a very small, compact, I still think emergency shelter for the winter camping because, uh, yeah, it's, it's not completely enclosed and, and you don't want to cut off all their flow inside. So, yeah, I think that would work as well. So here's what I'm interested in knowing. Do you have this shelter? If you have, what are your experiences with it? Have you done setups other than what I've done? I'd be really interested in that because I'm seeing more and more versatility the more I do play with this. I'd be especially interest, interested if you've turned it into a super shelter, how that worked out for you. Okay, if you have any comments or questions on this shelter, camping shelter from One Wind, please put them in the comments section below. As mentioned when I first opened up, the links to where you can purchase these as well as all the specifications I'll put in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.